Greetings everyone! I have another review for you here on the bench. This is a Fosse Audio Stereo Class D Amplifier. Well, about a month or two ago, I reviewed one of their amplifiers. And I was pretty happy with it. I usually have a lot of complaints with these amps, but uh, like I said in the other video, this was a cut above. And this amp is probably uh, cut above that one. It takes care of a thermal issue. Well, we'll check that out, but supposedly takes care of a thermal issue I have with a lot of these amplifiers. So let's unpack this thing and see what we got here. And here is the amplifier. It's a Fosse Audio V3. Like I said, it was sent in for review. I'm not being paid or anything. I'm going to give my honest opinion of it. Now this amplifier is quite similar in size to the TB10 that I reviewed in another video. The other one had tone controls and this one doesn't. It just has a volume control. And that's the way I like it. You know, if you have good speakers and a good listening room, you really normally don't need to adjust the tone. Now, I can understand the importance of tone controls in some situations, but like I say, I, I like it simple. Keep it simple. So this amplifier is supposed to contain high-quality WEMA film caps, Japanese electrolytics, high-quality coils in the output filters, swappable op amps. But one important thing they've done with this amp is much better thermal management. One issue I have with a lot of these amplifiers, they put the board in, you know, has a heat sink on the chip, but it's not physically attached to the case in any way. I mean, you get some thermal radiation from the heat sink to the case through convection and just radiation itself, but I think it's important for the heat sink to be in thermal contact or at least use the case itself as a heat sink. But you know, without thermal contact, the heat sink inside there is just going to get hot because it's not able to radiate the heat away as it could. But anyway, we'll, we'll look at all that when we pop the cover on this thing. But on the back here, you have your RCA inputs, preamp output, speaker connectors, and your 24 to 48 volts DC power connector. It includes a 36 volt 5 amp supply just like the other amp. We have the instruction manual. And this is kind of nice. They give you a different color volume control. It's a goldish, copperish color, I guess you could say. So if you want to uh, swap that out, or different color you have that option and uh, as always they claim outrageous max power 300 watts per channel by 2 into 4 ohms and it's going to be uh, probably like the other amp it's going to be around 93 or something like that we'll check all that out okay we're all hooked up here we got some YouTube safe fiddling music let's go about noise background hiss it's pretty quiet I mean uh, if I put my ear down here I can hear the computer fan a few feet away before I can hear any hiss so yeah I don't see any problem with that a lot of those amps and boards I tested of class D type had a lot of hiss, but just like the other Fosse amp, this one's really quiet. One thing I've noticed here is when I turn the power off, give it a second here to discharge. 
You hear that click? There's a relay inside, so it actually has real power down for a pop-free turn on and turn off. So that's a nice touch there. Okay, disassembled the amplifier. Not too difficult to get into. A little different construction than the other Fosse amp from the other review video. But uh, yeah, this appears to be very nicely done. So up front here we have the pogo pin, which makes contact with the casing here. It grounds the casing for better shielding. We have uh, Elna branded caps, socketed op amps. These are any 5532s, so if you wanted you could replace these with uh, another op amp that you like. I can see they're using the sockets that have the round holes, the nicer quality ones. Over here we have uh, the output filter chokes and capacitors. These are supposed to be a higher grade choke. You know, good quality audio choke. Wema branded capacitors as well. I'm not sure. These are uh, supply bypass. I think they're United Chemicon caps. So yeah, all very nice construction here. And yep, there's a relay right here in series with the input. So that's the click we're hearing. So this doesn't have just a standby. It actually does cut the power. And in doing so, they're using the relay. There are no clicks or pops. This appears to be a resettable type fuse. The series with the power there. And look at this on the bottom. This thick plate of aluminum. It's bolted onto the chip, pressing down on the chip there. Nice and thick. So what that does, when you slide it into the case, it bolts down with two screws, holds it against the case. So yeah, that does make much better heat sinking to me than just having one in the case not making any sort of contact. So it gets the heat to the casing where it can, you know, dissipate to the air instead of being trapped in a little more than one that just has the heat sink on the inside. So yeah, very high marks to this. This is a really nice looking design here to me. Okay, I'm going to reassemble it and do a power test. Okay, got everything hooked up for the test. Signal preamp because these things don't put out enough voltage even with the volume full open. For some reason these music players were limited. My other music player has a true line out voltage level but anyway. Um, Non-inductive load bank. We can switch between 8 and 4 ohms. Of course have the scope connected. So let's uh, point the camera here at the scope and uh, see what it can do. And yeah, there's clipping. Get a little bit of uh, that fuzz at the top and bottom. Pretty typical of these Class D amps. I'm going to say right about there. Okay, got the power measurements. I had to retake that one because I forgot to put enough waveforms on the scope. But we'll look at those at the end of the video. But for now, let's do frequency response. So I connected the field tech, I'm sorry, the field tech to the amplifier at one kilohertz. And uh, because some of the uh, switch mode frequency gets through, it causes the scope triggering to be erratic. But I set, so it's 
touching this graticule on the positive peak and the negative peak at that graticule. So ideally we don't want to deviate from that as we go through the frequency range. So let's take a look. Let's turn that down. We're at 200 hertz. Let's go down, down, down. We're at 20 hertz there and it is completely flat. Let's see where it starts to roll off. Wow, that's 10 hertz. I think the other amp was rolling off then. But let me uh, adjust this thing. Okay, that's three, four, so yeah, uh, five, around five or six. So yeah, it's pretty flat, way down as you would expect from a decent class A, B amp. You know, as you compare that. So now I'll go up, take a look at the high end of it. Okay, we're at 20 kilohertz. This is a very slight rise. Let's see where it starts to ramp off. See, it peaks up. Let me go back there. So it starts falling off at 75 kilohertz. You can see there's a, a big peak up there before it rolls off, but that's way above the audio spectrum. But in the audio spectrum, it's really flat. But let's see how it does at 4 ohms. Okay, 4 ohms at 20 kilohertz. There's a slight drop. Nothing major. And it's going to be flat throughout the rest of the frequency range. So yeah, this amplifier is pretty darn good as far as frequency response goes. Like I mentioned before, I've tested a lot of those boards and due to improper filter designs, those things are rolling off severely even at 10 kilohertz at 4 ohms. And again, that's because the poor design of the output filters. But with this design, I mean, you're going to let a little bit of the uh, switch mode frequency through. It's just the nature of the beast with these filters. But it's nothing audible. It's at a very high frequency. So here are the results of the measurements. With the 32 volt supply, 8 ohms, I was getting 51.1 watts. At 32 volts, had a hard time measuring this. Uh, 86 and a half. Well, just like the other amp, this being a 160 watt supply, five times five amps times 32 volts, 160, and uh, you figure in the efficiency. You're drawing around 200 watts, so it causes the supply to shut down. I also used my supply to measure at lower voltages in case you wanted to operate it at lower voltages. Now 4 ohms is 48.7, 28.1 at 8, and 18 volts, which is the minimum operating supply, is 27.3 at 4 and 60.7 at 8. So yeah. Slightly less than the other Fosse amp, as you can see here. Get these both in the shot. I mean, they're very close. And that's probably due to the different coils in the output filter. They might be absorbing some of the power. Give you slightly less. It's nothing audible and not really a big deal. So that's the power. Idle current is 40 milliamps. Like I said, the minimum supply is 18 volts. Flat frequency response.
Well, at some point, I hope to get a Quantasylum 403 analyzer. And they're not cheap, around 600 bucks, all said and done. But that's what I'm looking for to measure distortion. You're going to get your FFT display, your graph, and you can do all kinds of measurements, including intermodulation tests. Really versatile system. And for a distortion analyzer, it's not too bad. But until that, I, I can't really take good distortion measurements. I know I can set something up, and I might do that in the midterm, but uh, it, the amp sounds fine to me. You know, one test I like to do with these things is play piano music and unaccompanied piano music and just listen to the notes if they sound buzzy or clear. Uh, that's a good test for me. I put the uh, other knob on here so you can see the the color of that that looks kind of nice but all in all I'm really impressed with this amp pretty much addressed all the issues I've had with class D amps in the past especially the thermal design of this uh, the frequency response is good it gives you decent power you know at some point I might retest this when I can set up a higher voltage it's supposed to go up to 48 but with 4 ohm loads, I probably would stick with 36 to 40 maximum. And just because it can go that high doesn't mean you should be pushing things, especially if you want it to last. So yeah, really impressed with the amp. It's just a cut above everything else I've tested. It addresses all the issues I've had with some of these Class D amps. Yeah, highly recommended product. I would recommend it. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thanks for watching.